Hello and welcome to this video about Marantz CD84. Uh, well, there are plenty of videos about 84 on the internet, but um, I wanted to show you the insides. There's no point of showing you that it sort of plays CDs. And I hope it will still do after I put it together. The unit uh, basically had a very hesitant draw. That was the only problem. It played fine. So, um, at the heart of it, you have a CDM1 mechanism. This is a real deal. This is uh, uh, from the times that they still thought that they have to make them that good. And they've used the Carl Zeiss um, optics in that uh, swing arm uh, mechanism. There's plenty of adjustments there. You probably won't be able to see it anyway. But... Um, and there's probably a capacitor there or two that needs replacing. These are, I think, the only ones that use the Philip, uh, Philips Axial blue ones, which I really hate. Um, what we have here, this is, this is an audio board. And that audio board, I can't sort of take it any more than that. It, it has a couple of um, uh, TDA1540, the, which are... 14-bit um, chips and, and over there is a server board or oh, the rest of it or power supply really the rest power supply and server and, and that's the sort of a main uh, power supply so to those who think that every CD player has to be recapped after some time well that one doesn't it's 40 years old and uh, because that's probably 84 85 or something like that so it's approaching 40 years and, and still going strong. Uh, on the audio board we have a um, ELNA for audio and the rest is done with ELNA capacitors. Uh, there is a couple of Nippon Chemicons, but that's all. The, most of them are ELNA. So, so the, if the capacitors are good to start with, well, then they will last almost forever. That transformer there is probably just a supply for the um, for the display unit, which is um, somewhere there <laughs> on another board uh, I've took apart. Um, to the mechanism, uh, it, it was sort of working. Somebody replaced a belt on it, I think a bit too thin and too large, because you have to, when you see the original belt, and you get one exactly the same size, it's not going to work. Because the reason that old belt doesn't work is because it's stretched. So you have to have always one size smaller. That's sort of like three millimeter uh, diameter smaller. Uh, or not diameter, uh, circumference. Um, so I, I normally, when I finished with um, mechanisms, I sort of tend to run them in and out. Well, I was unsuccessful this time because it goes through five different cogs and pulleys. So the only thing you can do to check that it works, you have to physically run it with the finger, you know, bit by bit and, and, and see that it advances. Well, I, I did connect it to my power supply. Uh, first, I try three volts, but obviously it's like a 12 volt motor. So uh, at five volts, it started going in and out nicely. Um, the um, the CD clamp is done by uh, that thing. When the drawer comes in, it uh, it gets pushed in, and and uh, well, at the moment nothing I cannot show you because the with the drawer out, it's not going to drop uh, any further. But that's all there is to it. I had to clean it all and then reassemble. So, uh, but normally you cannot see the mechanism or, or even power supply because it's all encased in all these metals. But you see, it's fairly complex, fairly complex stuff. Not as complex as some, but, but still. So, uh, that's about all. Um, hopefully, it will work after I finish with it when I reassemble it. That uh, it's pretty good condition, a very nice display, wherever it is, <laughs> I have to, had to put it aside somewhere, and um, well, till the next one, bye bye.